All right guys, today we're starting a new build. Um, this uh, is for um, a 60 by 80 building that's going to have living quarters in it. We are not doing the living quarters, we're just uh, building the structure for the client and getting him started. So this will be pretty cool. Um, he does have a YouTube handle, so if you wanna see how this uh, gets finished off later, you can definitely follow along and we'll give you that um, at some point. But we're, today we're gonna lay out, so this is a 60 by 80, so our diagonal is 100 foot. So we have our batten boards at each corner. We're gonna use our laser level to find the highest point. This is already pretty much close to grade. So we're just gonna find the highest point and set that tube, that pier, right at the level of the ground and the rest will just adjust accordingly. So first step is to get our batten boards in and pull string lines. And then this one going this way. And hit this. Pretty good there. Pound that one in, Jake, right there. Pretty sure that's gonna be the highest corner, but. So we're setting our batting, batting boards. We're gonna start with this front wall. Um, I met with the client and he showed me where he wants the front of his building. So we'll go ahead and uh, I'll mark the corner. We'll pull 80 feet make another dot for a footing, and then we'll put our other batten board down there, and that'll be our starting point, and the rest we will use the Pythagorean Theorem to set this layout up. Go ahead and hold it right up against it at the bottom. Lift yours up a little when you screw it in. Yep. Now that we got this front set, we're going to go ahead and get our string line set right across these points that we marked and then our front starting point will be set. Before we pull that string line, I want to find the highest point, which I just by looking at it, I think is that corner over there. So I zeroed it out here, and then we'll check each four spots and then zero it on the highest point. That way that footing can be right at the ground level. So this over here is about six, eight inches higher than that. This is the highest point. That's gonna be close with that one. Which I can't get low enough. I have to go negative. So the reason we do this is so that all of our string lines run level. That way you're not getting any discrepancies in uh, your tape measure. Um, when you're doing your footings, you can measure off the lines if you need to. Um, it just makes things a little bit more accurate. Go ahead and put your screw in if you're over the center. Typically, I would use a purlin nail and drive it into the ground and it's strong enough I can hook my um, tape measure to and pull it, but we've had so much rain that there's no way that would work. So, it's gonna be some trial and error. We're gonna hook this on the batten board. It's about three feet, six inches to here, and I said our angle was 100, so we're gonna have to add three foot, six inches to that. So I'm gonna have Jake pull to that corner and then I'll pull the tape from the other corner and we'll match up uh, 60 feet and 103 and a half feet. 
And this is this is gonna get us close, and then we'll fine tune it. We we'll, might have to have Justin put the camera down and get it exact. But. You at 1036 still? Yep. Alright, we should be good to set our batting board. So guys, as you're doing this, that first side's obviously easy because it's your it's your common line. That's what you want your front of your structure, back of your structure, whatever the case may be. And then you just have to get these close to get your batting boards up. And then before you start drilling, you need to fine tune this. Um, I'm kind of really picky about this part because this is this will determine how the rest of your build goes, how these foot footings lay out. You want these to be perfect, um, or as close to perfect as possible, so it makes your job easier later on. You're good. If I held the hammer like a man, it wouldn't take me so hit many hits. in it right there. Okay. Pull it tight. Start with a screw right there. And I'll get another string line and then we'll do the uh, opposite corner. I have to use the long one on the diagonal because that one's not going to be So Jake, we're going to do the same thing with this one. Hopefully, we'll hit this. Just pull. It. I'm going to go get that, take it down there, hold over the orange dot, and then set a screw temporarily. here and drill holes. I'll take breaks here in a little bit. How much do I have to add? Two, four, and an eighth. Two, four, and an eighth? Two, four, and an eight. So this ground here is super soft, and we had to pound our stakes in so far that they weren't high enough to reach our board, so we just extended it with some two by fours and then braced it. Now that's good and strong, so when we pull on our string lines, it won't pull, um, pull us off of our measurement. All right guys, we have all the string lines up. They're within a couple inches. So we're gonna start with this uh, common front uh, line and we're just gonna work our way around making sure everything is square. And all we have to do to fine tune this is to pull these screws out and move them left or right, whatever we need to do. So we'll just start here, Jake, and I'll, we'll go back down to there, 80 feet. I'll mark that. Then we'll go diagonal that way, mark that. And then we'll go diagonal that way, mark that. Are you burning two or just putting it in the center? Center. All right, just stay right there, okay? Yeah. 
Good right there? Yeah. And that's like a 16th, we're good. All right, we're good here. So you guys, we have to move this point. Um, we're off maybe an inch. So I'm gonna have Justin mark this orange line. So five, so right on the inside of those two diamonds. Mm -hmm. or the, yep. Perfect. So that's gonna be our new point right there. So it might move that one like just a hair, but over that 60 feet is probably not gonna be much at all. Too far. Just a hair too far. right there yep now we have to go we move this what do you think three quarters of an inch maybe yeah so over the course of 60 feet we may have moved that corner an eight to a 16th so we'll go back and check it just to be sure um, but if that's all right we're gonna have one two three corners that are good then we just have to fine-tune this last corner and we'll be square and we can start marking for our piers Yeah. All right, we're good. So you can see we moved this string line 60 feet over there, three quarters of an inch, and it didn't move this corner, so we're still good. 102.5. Oh gosh, that's gonna be perfect, man. We're gonna have to move this over just a little bit. This is a plastic tape, so it's kind of hard to know how hard to fold it. I have all metal tapes, except for this one is plastic, and it's really windy, so I'm having a hard time knowing how hard to pull this. So I'm going to swap this one out with a metal one, just to make sure that we're good, because these plastic ones stretch a lot more than the metal. So we're 83.6 there. five and a half there so we're good all right Jake we just have to check this last one five foot eight and eight eight or eight eight Woo. I was like <laughs> holy <laughs> 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 we're like uh an eighth off. Maybe it's, when you pulled it tight, it was 16. We're good. Okay. We're good to mark it out. But when you said eight inches, man, I about had a <laughs> heart attack. <laughs> like, like, we gotta start over. What? <laughs> All right, now just nobody trip on these lines. <laughs> Simple task. All right, guys, we have it all laid out. We've measured both links at 80 feet, both sides at 60. Our angles are at 100, so we're close. We're like 1 8 inch off on, on one, but that's good to lay out all of our footings. Once we get laid, get them laid all out, we'll make sure those string lines are perfect when the before the concrete truck comes, because then once we pour all our footings, we'll put them back up to set all our brackets. So I'm gonna put stakes in all four corners, and then we're gonna start pulling our post locations. Two, right? Yep.
this is the outside edge of the building where we mark. So that's gonna be the outside edge of the girt. So if you imagine there's gonna be an inch and a half and then your post will go. So you have to imagine that you want the center of that footing like right there. So you always, I always come in like half a foot or something and I'll just make a divot because then it starts easier in this rock. That way, your your post is in the you want it as close to the center as you can. Screw ready, Jake. We're gonna put one. Spread, spread out. Put one down at the bottom first. Yep. And then run it right into the dirt. That's good. Do that one. Do one here. That is my zero. Do you have that two foot level down here? My chip? Yeah. Alright, now the way we're going to keep these in place. That should be fitting tight. Just make a little rock. It should hold most of it as long as it's tight around there. Some of these aren't gonna work like this. When
One more. Yep. any windier. Ready? Same thing. Yep. Two inch. Eight two. Good? Yep. Sixteen two. Yep. Four two. Good. Yep. So we marked this line right here in the concrete, an inch and a half off of our string line and that is the, obviously the distance of a girt. So that line will stay there. It just gives you a good bearing point. If it's really windy, these string lines don't work all that well. Um, and then when I set my bracket, this bracket is five inches from here to here. A column is five and a half. So I want to set this back roughly a quarter inch. So I have play either way with my column. it for level or plumb I should say for you those of you who get mad about that so we're plumb this way we do not have to do it this way because these are bent anyway they kind of flare out so your column goes in it so it'd do you no good to plumb that up so we get it plumb and then we just check to make sure we're about inch and five eighths inch and three quarter we're good there Good there. All right guys, we appreciate you watching. This is gonna wrap up the layout and footings to the 60 by 80, um, I guess you could call it a Schaus or Arno, kind of everybody calls them different things, but this is actually a shop and it's gonna have a small living quarters in it um, while the clients save up for their house, which they will eventually attach to this. So this is a pretty cool build, um, follow along. It's uh, gonna be all black, but if you guys have any questions on layout or footings, um, Leave those in the comments. We'll do our best to answer them. 
Don't forget, we have a Patreon uh, where every month we talk about specific topics. Um, you know, we talk about footings, we talk about in-floor heat, we talk about the whole building process. It's a great uh, resource for you if you're going to self-build. Check that out, and as always, we appreciate watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.